Welcome to the Alaska Weather Show. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan coming to you from the National Weather Service through a unique partnership with Alaska Public Media. We try to do this each evening. It is Sunday, December 4th, 2022. And if you'd like additional weather information on top of what I provide, you can go to weather.gov. That is the National Weather Service's online presence. It'll bring you a map uh, of the continental US with Alaska and Hawaii to the lower left. And if you put your mouse on there and point and click, it'll give you a weather forecast and any relevant uh, watches, warnings, or advisories for anywhere in the country. A great way to check up on what the weather's like uh, in family and friends locations. And looking at the map this Sunday afternoon, there's a patch of green there. Tennessee, the Tennessee Valley area could pick up some heavier rains this week, uh, perhaps as much as uh, three and six inches of rainfall in and around Nashville area in that portion of uh, the, the Middle South. But, out to the west, quite a few uh, winter weather advisories throughout the uh, interior northwest from Montana westward. And then also still a winter storm warning for areas of the Sierra Nevada and California. Here in Alaska, we continue to have winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories in effect for portions of the west central parts of the state, including the coast and parts of the interior. Strong winds, some mixed precipitation. The precipitation is not expected to be especially ha- heavy, but It could include even some uh, freezing rain as we've had warmer temperatures now above freezing creep all the way north upward along the uh, northwest Arctic coast. Also, uh, Kuskokwim and Bristol Bays could see water levels running a couple of feet, maybe as much as three to four feet above uh, astronomical high tide as we go through uh, tonight into early Monday morning, but we're not anticipating any significant uh, coastal flooding just a a small chance of some minor flooding. And then a large high pressure ridge that has been the main weather feature here for much of this past week. It's gonna break down uh, early in the week ahead and that's gonna allow kind of for more of a progressive west to east pattern to set up for next week. Looking at a few of the FAA webcams, Ambler, where still there is a winter storm warning in effect. There have been some breaks in the cloud cover this afternoon, but there'll be another round of some snow and mixed precipitation possible tonight as a uh, front works its way eastward. Savunga, well, it's been uh, some mixed precipitation, very windy wind gusts there, St. Lawrence Island upwards of 60, 70 miles an hour. We even had, a, uh, I saw a wind gust to 74 miles an hour there at Tin City, uh, the Bering Strait. So some very strong winds there along uh, coastal areas of the west and out uh, in the Bering. Uh, Togiak, also windy conditions there along the southwest coast. Winds have been gusting every from 35 upwards to 55 miles an hour. A little light rain, temperature 37 degrees, and again, Togiak could see water levels a couple few feet above normal with the uh, astronomical high tide as we go through tonight early uh, Monday morning. Otherwise, in the southeast, uh, a lot of bright blue sky. Wrangell enjoying some sunshine this Sunday afternoon, but temperatures on the chilly side, only 27 degrees. And I got this image from one of my music-making friends, Caleb uh, Caleb the Banjo Man. He's up working uh, one of the mines there east of Fairbanks, and so that's a a lovely shot there of the interior. And conditions in the interior, there is a special weather statement in and around the Fairbanks area, air quality alert, because this temperature inversion beneath this ridge of high pressure tends to trap uh, particulates from heating and exhaust, so the air quality is not the greatest there uh, in the Fairbanks area as a result of this, and that uh, air quality alert continues through 11 a.m. Monday morning. To the west, we still have winter storm warnings in effect. The southwest side of the Brooks Range, areas surrounding Kotzebue Sound, northwest, south side of Seward Peninsula, including uh, Shishmaref and Nome, as well as St. Lawrence Island. Again, the potential for some additional snow accumulations on the lighter side, but it could be mixed with freezing rain and then some strong gusty winds. Some of these winds are uh, storm force uh, to near hurricane force gusts there on the western Seward Peninsula. And then further south, We do have the coastal flood advisory in effect until 3 a.m. Monday morning for areas of Kuskokwim, and especially the west side of uh, Bristol Bay. But at this point, we're not anticipating any uh, significant problems. The water levels could be a couple few feet above 
uh, the astronomical high tide. And looking at the satellite imagery, we have one front now that's going to be pushing into the southwest coast here uh, this evening. Ahead of it, it's been rather mild. We've seen temperatures uh, across the Alaska Peninsula, mid 40s, hit 50 degrees at Chicknick. And this warm air has been transported all the way through the Bering Strait along the Chukchi Sea coast. Temperatures have gotten above freezing, as warm as uh, 34 all the way up there to Wainwright, 41 at Cape Lisburn, getting some downslope winds coming off the higher terrain with that strong southeast flow. Uh, so again, uh, mild air there along the west coast. And uh, watching yet, if you look further off to your screen to the far left, there's yet a second frontal system that'll be moving into the west coast on Monday night. The ridge of high pressure that's still anchored uh, over the North Pacific up into the Gulf, though, is beginning to break down and slide east-south-eastward. So this is going to allow these systems to more readily work their way west to east here as we uh, have the week ahead. But here's the current situation. There's the high-centered uh, North Pacific south of the Gulf with a ridge extending northward. We have a strong frontal system now working its way into uh, the southwest and west coast with low pressure over eastern Russia and yet another strong low out there at the Kamchatka Peninsula with another frontal system working its way across the western half of the Aleutians. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, winds are quite strong along these frontal systems. Uh, precipitation will be pushing inland tonight with that front, uh, some snow and maybe a little mixed precipitation. A secondary low develops near Kodiak Island uh, toward early Monday morning as the second front there works its way into the central bearing. And then come Monday afternoon, we see a weak low off the Kenai coast and uh, a little bit of light snow trying to spread inland across the Alaska range and into the uh, central Yukon interior with another round of wind and some precipitation that could include some mixed precipitation uh, there in areas of the southwest coast. Uh, that system will be moving inland come Monday night. And then by the time we get into Tuesday, we can see that uh, yet another kind of load develops with that secondary front working its way in over the northwestern portion of the Gulf with areas of some light snow or snow showers uh, across scattered across the interior. Temperatures will not be quite as warm as what they've been certainly along the west coast. They'll cool down a little bit here uh, in the next couple of days. So looking at the Panhandle morning lows below freezing generally in the 20s in most areas with the exception of maybe Sitka. Uh, eight below Glen Allen, Copper River Basin, Teens, Anchorage, on up toward Talkeetna. 35 though, Kodiak, uh, again, we have that frontal system, uh, mild southeast flow ahead of that front. Temperatures Monday afternoon should generally get above freezing in the Panhandle. Uh, stay below freezing though, Anchorage Bowl northward and into the 40s, mid 40s, uh, say Kodiak. And then Tuesday morning lows. Uh, slip below freezing across the inner uh, channels there of the Panhandle and certainly still below freezing northern Kenai on up through the Susitna uh, Valley. The temperatures along the uh, Homer down toward uh, Kodiak will remain above freezing and temperatures Tuesday afternoon maybe not quite as mild but it's going to help uh, bump up temperatures with the flow coming in off the Gulf 45 there at Sitka 43 around uh, areas like uh, Klawak and uh, Heidelberg. Well, to the far north, uh, notice these low temperatures uh, in the 20s on the west side of the state. Highs Monday afternoon still in areas of the north slope could be above freezing into the mid 30s. And uh, readings near freezing still in a number of spots. And then come Tuesday morning, coldest reading up there around uh, Kaktovik is zero. Four below to the south there along the Elkham border at Northway. And then uh, for Tuesday afternoon, we expect temperatures not to be quite as mild, kind of cooling back down into the teens along the Arctic coast 20s elsewhere. And for the southwest, lows still generally below freezing for the interior, though temperatures may bump up along the southwest coast and certainly there through the, uh, the uh, Alaska Peninsula and Aleutians. Highs, warmest temperatures Monday afternoon with that frontal system will be from Kodiak Island down through Chicknick with readings at least uh, mid 40s. And then Tuesday morning lows still in, uh, below freezing there across the southwest interior, generally above freezing the Alaska Peninsula out into the eastern Aleutians. And Tuesday afternoon highs may moderate just slightly back up around 30 or so across the southwest interior and around or maybe even a tad above freezing for areas like Dillingham and King Salmon. Let's look at the 6 to 10 day temperature outlook coming up here as we approach mid-month, December 10th through the 14th. The emphasis is it's going to cool back down over the southeast mainland into the panhandle. 
Uh, so then there's a pretty good likelihood when you have that much of an anomaly. Uh, we do expect that's pretty likely to see uh, temperatures average below normal. They are in through the southeast and Pandal. Further west, we expect near normal temperatures along areas of the west coast and up in through uh, the western part of the uh, north slope and northwest coast. Precipitation wise, as we approach mid month, December 10th through the 14th, those colder temperatures probably at times a little bit more of a drier offshore flow. Uh, precipitation may average uh, below normal there. Uh, areas of the south, including around Cook Inlet, especially Prince William Sound, eastward in through much of the Panhandle in areas like Juneau down through Ketchikan. Further west, precipitation may average slightly above normal in the west, especially from around Bethel on up through Nome, Kotzebue, and Utkiatvik. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Here is your aviation weather. If you have a flight planned early in the week, Monday or on Tuesday, the high pressure ridge that has been dominant for some time now across the Gulf and up through the eastern half of the mainland is breaking down and will continue to slide east southeastward. Further west through the bearing, we have another frontal system working its way through the central bearing with IFR conditions. Still, IFR conditions persist along areas of the west coast up and through the southwest and lower Alaska range. And by the time we get into Monday afternoon, uh, we have the remnants of a front that came on shore pushing across the interior with areas of precipitation and IFR conditions. And then we have the next frontal system that will be moving into the southwest coast, the YK uh, deltas, as we go through Monday afternoon and especially evening, that front uh, making landfall. And then during the day on Tuesday, that moisture continues to work its way eastward across the mainland and then a uh, secondary low that develops in the northwestern gulf will tend to push some moisture back up into the northeastern gulf and panhandle by Tuesday morning. So we have rather widespread IFR conditions anticipated continuing into Tuesday afternoon uh, throughout areas of the mainland, especially centered on the Yukon uh, River Valley and uh, south side of the Brooks Range and then again much of the northeastern gulf coast and panhandle. Pass conditions, Anatovic Pass, we'll see MVFR conditions become IFR on Monday. Same thing at Attigan Pass, MVFR to IFR. Generally, IFR conditions will prevail, uh, lower uh, western arm of the Alaska Range, Lake Clark and Merrill, and on up through Rainy Pass. Windy Pass may start MVFR but become IFR as we go through the day on Monday. And Isabel Pass, uh, starting out with a little VFR conditions early in the day, becoming MVFR further east. Mentasta Pass should generally be VFR, though if you fly north of the north entrance, there may be some MVFR there in the morning, giving way to VFR conditions. Tanita Pass, VFR early Monday, giving way to MVFR. Portage Pass, we expect generally MVFR conditions there uh, throughout the day. Monday, though, uh, south of the pass uh, could be uh, an area more persistent IFR conditions there getting into the Kenai Peninsula. And then across the, the panhandle there in the north, Chilkoot and White still VFR conditions for Monday. Now freezing levels, we've had one frontal system push inland. The remnants of that has allowed uh, this dome of warmer air aloft, including what's left of that uh, mid-upper level ridge. So we see uh, the freezing levels aloft upwards of four and 6,000 feet all the way up to, to the north slope in through the uh, Yukon Tanana valleys and uh, out over the Gulf, generally uh, freezing levels at or above 6,000 feet. The surface freezing line being pushed all the way north up there along the uh, northwest Arctic coast to almost Utkiadvik. And icing, uh, the greatest threat for icing will be associated with this next frontal system uh, pushing in through uh, the eastern half of the Bering Sea and up into the southwest coast. Uh, for icing generally possible uh, above three and 6,000 feet down there through the eastern Aleutians. There could be some uh, pockets of moderate icing there across the interior, generally above uh, four and 6,000 feet. And looking at the jet stream level winds, uh, the ridge still there, but uh, not as pronounced as it was here the past several days, uh, centered uh, in the North Pacific. And uh, look to the west, a very strong jet core, 150 to 170 knot uh, west-northwest jet core just to the uh, southwest of the Aleutian chain. And at 9,000 feet or 700 millibars, strongest winds are located there along the west coast from the Bering Strait down uh, through the YK Deltas into the at least southern half of the Alaska Peninsula, 50 to as high as 65 knot uh, southwest south winds. 
and then uh, extending back out through uh, the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. And then coming down to 3,000 feet, you can clearly see this uh, frontal band that will be pushing uh, inland up through uh, St. Lawrence, uh, in through Nunavik Island, uh, especially the YK Deltas. Winds anywhere from 50 to 60 knots, even upwards of 65 knots there in uh, the uh, Gulf of Anadir. And this is going to translate to widespread moderate and, uh, in cases, uh, isolated severe turbulence from areas of the Chukchi Sea and northwest coast, extending down through the Bering Strait, across St. Lawrence Island, and through the eastern portions of the Bering Sea, including St. Matthew, St. Paul, St. George, as well as Nunavik Island, and down into the eastern Aleutians, generally finding that between the surface and 3,000 feet, with some areas uh, surface to 6,000 foot uh, turbulence there along areas of the western and central Brooks Range. So that wraps up your aviation weather. If you do have a flight, have a safe one. We try to provide everyone with the best forecast we can for snow, sleet, and ice in the winter with as much notice as we can. And we've made great strides in our forecasting over the years. However, given the complexity in winter weather forecasting, the first forecast simply won't be as good as the one closer to the event. As the event nears, our forecast will become more precise. Forecasts are updated constantly from days before the event until the precipitation actually begins. If you want the most accurate and up-to-date information, you have to check the forecast frequently. It's very unlikely that any computer model snow amount forecast, especially days in advance, will be exactly right. Sometimes it's even difficult to forecast amounts the day of the event. Don't focus so much on exact numbers. Our forecast offices produce a range of possibilities available on each office's winter page. Impacts from winter storms can vary a lot across even short distances, especially true in the terrain of the mountains, but even in areas with more subtle differences in elevation. Just because it's not bad where you are doesn't mean that it isn't bad just a short distance away. There's often a small area, perhaps not bigger than a couple of counties, of heavy snow embedded within the larger area of precipitation. It is very difficult to pinpoint exactly where this area will occur in advance. That is why we give ranges and probabilities, and that is what we mean when we say isolated higher amount. Not all storms are the same. Some storms affect different areas in different ways, and even weaker storms can produce big impacts. The Winter Storm Severity Index is a product that uses threat levels to depict overall anticipated impacts to society due to winter weather. You can be a citizen scientist. You can report the weather that is occurring at your location any time of day. Local National Weather Service forecast offices offer Skywarn Storm Spotter training, so you can become an official Skywarn Storm Spotter. The MPing app and website allows you to submit your report online. And for the most dedicated, you can join Coca Ross, where you can submit your daily precipitation report directly to the National Weather Service. Your ground truth helps us improve forecasts. Did you know that a one to two degree temperature difference either at the surface or just a few hundred feet off the ground can make a big difference in whether we get rain, freezing rain, sleet, or snow? That's really hard to forecast when we don't have a lot of data, but thankfully we do have 92 upper air stations that release weather balloons at least twice a day. Even if you live in warmer climates, it's important to know your winter precipitation types when traveling. Freezing rain is liquid rain that freezes when it hits the ground, creating a coat of ice on roads, walkways, trees, and power lines. Sleet is rain that freezes into ice pellets before reaching the ground. Snow squalls are quick, intense bursts of heavy snow that are accompanied by gusty winds. They rapidly reduce visibility and can create treacherous travel. Snow squall warnings are issued for localized areas where snow squalls are expected in the next 30 to 60 minutes. As of December 2019, they are now sent as one of the wireless emergency alerts. 
Know the differences between watches, warnings, and advisories. A winter storm warning means that confidence is high that a winter storm will produce heavy wintry precipitation and cause significant impacts. A winter storm watch means that confidence is medium and that a winter storm producing significant impacts is possible. A winter weather advisory means to exercise caution as light amounts of wintry precipitation will cause slick conditions and may impact travel. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back to the final segment of our show. We begin the marine weather with the sea ice edge. The ice is rather extensive there along the Arctic coast. We've had strong winds southeast, south uh, winds trying to veer southwest as you go down along the, the western, southwestern coast. So it's going to cause ice to shift around in areas, especially along and southwest there from Utjavik uh, down through Point Hope and then in the various sounds, Kotzebue, Norton Sound, and further south areas uh, along the YK deltas and through Kuskokwim and Bristol Bays uh, with the strong southeast winds ahead of the frontal system that will be moving through the area this Sunday evening and early Sunday night. We have yet another front that will be pushing across the area come Monday night. So again, we expect uh, some, some shifting of the ice with those stronger uh, southeast winds veering southwesterly. In the southeast panhandle, winds will generally be out of the north, northwest 15 knots for the inner channels, waves running a few feet. Outer coast, 25 to 30 knot west to northwest winds with waves 9 feet off of uh, Yakutat, upwards to 12 and 13 feet south of Sitka and off of Craig. On Tuesday, a frontal band does approach and uh, that will allow winds to shift uh, more out of the south. Southeast to south winds inner channel, 15 to as high as 25 knots down around Metlakatla and uh, Ketchikan, waves three feet, Lynn Canal, four or five feet as you get down toward Dixon entrance. Uh, look for southerly winds, or at least a southerly component to the winds there off the Gulf to 30 knots and waves generally running upwards around 13 to 15 feet. For the northwestern Gulf, Prince William Sound will see variable winds, 10 knots, waves two feet. Uh, down the length of Cook Inlet, generally northeast winds turning northwest there at the entrance, 15 to 20 knots, waves 3 to 4 feet, and then off the Kenai, south-southwest winds 20 knots, waves around 8-9 feet. Tuesday, uh, winds will be southeast 15 knots in Prince William Sound with waves a few feet. Generally northwest winds through the lower half of Cook Inlet, 20 to 25 knots with waves of 3 to 5 feet. Still southerly winds off of the Kenai coast, 15 to 20 knots, waves 7 to 9 feet. On Monday, Kodiak Island will see west-southwest winds 15 to 20 knots, but they increase as you get out along the length of the Alaska Peninsula. Look for southwest to south winds 35 to 40 knot gales uh, south of Sand Point and north of Cold Bay with waves uh, generally running on the north Pacific side 10 to 14 feet and 7 to 12 feet uh, there on the Bering side. On Tuesday, winds are going to turn more to a west-northwest component to generally around 30 knots area-wide. 
five foot wave Shelikov straight waves running anywhere from nine to 15 feet on the North Pacific side and 10 to 13 feet from Bristol Bay to north of Cold Bay. Across the Aleutian chain, the eastern Aleutians will see gale force winds upwards of 35 and 45 knots, especially there through the eastern Aleutians. They'll be up from the south. North Pacific side, waves running as high as 20 feet. On the uh, Bering side, away from the shelter of the islands, wa uh, waves generally running 15 to 17 feet, though they'll be around and a bit over 20 feet uh, west of ADAC. And then on Tuesday, area wide along the Aleutian chain, generally west winds around 30 knots, waves. Uh, 15 to 17 feet on the North Pacific side and 17, 18 feet on the Bering side, again, away from the shelter of the islands. And then along the southwest coast, uh, gale force winds of 40 to 45 knots, waves uh, generally running anywhere from 13 to 19 feet, highest there in the vicinity of St. Paul, St. George. Look for southeast winds 30 knots uh, across Norton Sound where there is ice in place, but some shifting could go on. Tuesday, winds come down in Norton Sound, southeast to 15 knots, but another front uh, there. Uh, shifts winds with that next passage to the west, 25 to as high as 35 knots there in the vicinity of St. Paul and St. George, and waves anywhere from 12 to as high as 18 and 19 feet around St. Matthew and St. Paul. Along the Arctic coast, winds will be out of the uh, east-southeast, 30 to as high as 40 knot gales in the vicinity of Kaktovik, where the ice is in place. Going down through the lower Chukchi Sea in the Bering Strait, winds have some sort of southerly component to them, 35 to as high as 45 knots, uh, waves 10 to 12 feet in the lower Chukchi Sea and in excess of 10 to 17 feet there south of the Bering Strait. On Tuesday, winds will generally be out of the east, 30 to 35 knots along the Arctic coast, highest there at Kaktovik, and then down through the lower Chukchi Sea, east to southeast, winds 25 knots, waves four to six feet, and uh, south of the strait, uh, west winds 25 knots with waves 12 feet north of St. Lawrence Island. Quick check shows one front moving inland to the west side of the state tonight, and then on Monday, second front approaches the west and southwest coasts. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.